After a disaster which is regional or even national in scope, many people will be tempted to venture out to scavenge for supplies. People who are prepared to endure a long-term grid-down incident, in most cases should never need to go out and put themselves in harm's way like this. Unfortunately, factors beyond your control may force you to bug out of the location that you're in. Today we're going to talk about the dangers of scavenging in a post-collapse landscape. Let's get to it. Today we're going to talk about the delusions and dangers of people trying to sustain themselves during a long-term grid-down blackout situation in a densely populated urban environment. People tend to fantasize about how they're just going to go shopping after a grid-down event. Perhaps Hollywood has influenced their belief that somehow they're going to be the last man standing free to leech off the remains of a vacant post-apocalyptic landscape, undeterred and limited only by their own endurance. The reality, of course, would be much different than video games and post-apocalyptic fiction would have those people anticipate, and it's going to be wrought with challenges that are quickly going to dissolve any delusions that these people have. Now, typically, when people think of scavenging, they talk about all of the commercial, government, and industrial buildings that they are going to go and mine for supplies. Things like sporting goods stores, pawn shops, self-storage facilities, veterinary clinics, home repair stores, hospitals, fire stations, food distribution centers, pharmacies, schools, construction sites, grocery stores, gas stations, automotive shops, industrial warehouses, manufacturing centers, the list goes on. Basically any place from which there exists artifacts made by man, you will find useful supplies. However, here are some things to consider. First thing you need to consider is if you're talking about a grid down event on a national or even only statewide scale, you're talking about millions of other people trying to do exactly what you are doing. Most of these people will be as desperate, if not more desperate than you, because they're likely to be very unprepared and due to the stress of the situation, they're going to be very anxious, impulsive, trigger happy, and just generally ravenous and not willing to cooperate when it comes to sparring for whatever little supplies you might come across. The only condition in which there wouldn't be a lot of people is where you are somehow lucky enough to be one of the lone survivors in any given area and the probability of that happening is obviously very low. The reality is there's probably going to be a whole lot of people looking for a whole lot of nothing and they're going to be doing it in an environment which is very unsanitary. You would be coming across corpses, a diseased people, all manner of human refuse which is going to just increase the likelihood that you're going to get sick. When you are traversing through the urban landscape looking for supplies, there's probably always going to be a set of eyeballs on you somewhere, probably dozens if not hundreds at a time. You're not just going to be moving through the streets unnoticed. You're going to be under constant scrutiny by people who probably would have nothing better to do with their time than wait for help or aid or bunker down in the towering high-rise complexes that surround you. Many of these people, if desperate enough, are going to be sizing you up, looking to capitalize on any weakness that you might show. And the reality is you could easily be sniped from countless locations in an urban environment. You're really going to be at the mercy of others to show restraint and not stab you in the back. The only way post-collapse urban scavenging is even remotely feasible is if you have some kind of flak jacket. And even then, you are not going to be free from casualty. Another problem with this idea is that the more time you spend out there in the space, the more likely you are to sustain a life-threatening injury. Even a superficial injury in these conditions could lead to a bad infection, which could lead to your death, as you will have compromised immunity. This will be the result of being sleep deprived, nutrient deprived, and just the chronic stress of the whole debacle will take its toll on your mind and body. You're probably just as likely to be a victim of violence or get yourself into some kind of altercation with other desperate people as you are likely to find food or supplies to scavenge. Another thing is having to enter buildings makes you very vulnerable. So the only way you can scavenge an urban environment in a sensible way is to do it with a team of people. There are simply too many angles for you to try to defend against on your own. You'll also be expending lots of energy 
searching for resources because if you're doing it smart you're going to be scouting for long periods of time before you go anywhere it may take you a whole day just to scout out a location which is a couple blocks away in a way in which you go unseen in addition to that you also have to deal with the weather if it's very cold out you're going to expend a lot more energy trying to keep warm as you do this it's not going to be you prancing down the street with a backpack full of goodies on a hot sunday afternoon so the idea that you're just going to go house to house or building to building and cover large areas of ground in short periods of time is delusional. Another thing to remember is that anything you want was at once owned by somebody. Uh, with the exception of government facilities and other public facilities, it's likely that the majority of things that possess any value are going to be behind somebody who has a firearm. Thus, scavenging is inevitably going to involve theft, which is going to beget violence. What's more is that if you are lucky to find some supplies and come out unscathed, transporting it back to your location without being noticed or without drawing attention to yourself or getting in an altercation over those supplies is also going to be an immense challenge. Now, if this is something that you have to do day in and day out to sustain yourself, you can see how the probability of your survivability drastically diminishes day after day. Another problem is how much can you actually carry? You're going to need some way to transport what you're carrying because it's presumed that you may not have a vehicle or that roads may be gridlocked so you're going to have to find a way to transport large amounts of goods in a way which doesn't make you stick out like a sore thumb the more capable the mode of conveyance that you use to transport cargo then the more it's likely going to draw attention to you now you can probably mitigate some of the aforementioned problems by taking a nocturnal approach to scavenging because a city would essentially be shrouded in darkness after a blackout event trying to find supplies in the dark in places that have probably already been combed 10 times over is going to be like looking for a needle in a haystack without night vision goggles and a clear destination in mind it's likely you're just going to end up expending a lot of time and energy for nothing. Another problem with scavenging is the fact that you have to leave your home base unguarded. Unless you have people at home, of course. Because you've left that location, they now have less manpower to defend themselves. You also run the risk of being followed and having people come back to your home base. So the more you leave and come back and leave and come back, the greater the risk of ambush or invasion. Now, there are some benefits to getting out there into the post-collapse space, if you will. One of these is that you get to know your surroundings. You're going to gain a familiarity with the threats that are in your area. And generally speaking, being out there, being in an expansive mindset is a more dominant and assertive position to take than passively holding your ground in the trenches. This is going to make for less surprises as you're out there seeing what's going on in your world you get a sense of who is out there who the main threats are and you're generally going to be better adapted to this changing world so it won't come as such a shock to your system should you eventually run out of supplies and be forced to be out there scavenging it's also going to allow you to stay fit stay mobile keep your senses heightened hone your situational awareness skills and just have a general sense of what's going on in the world. There's going to be a fog of SHTF in which you may not have all the answers as to what's going on around you. You may be being fed propaganda from an emergency broadcast system, which for all you know, is just something which is running on repeat. Even though the government has long since folded and it's full-blown anarchy in the streets. Let me know if you have any other suggestions in the comments section below with regards to identifying different hazards and different strategies that you would use if you were forced to go out and scavenge for supplies. If you enjoyed this video, there's a couple other videos I've made in the past which are very similar to this one that you can go and check out through the links in the description. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.